If you believe that the way you think has some effect on your life, and you think the same thoughts every day, 90% of most people think the same thoughts as they did yesterday. Would you agree then that if you're not waking up every morning being defined, by some vision of your future, then pretty much you are going to be living by the memories of your past and you will be predictable in your life. Yes or no? Because the brain is a record of the past. And so, if you're not creating a new future, is it possible that you believe in your past more than you believe in your future? And is it possible then that many people don't want to create a new future because they're more in love with their past than they are with their future? In fact, they romance their past every single day. So then is it possible then that that person in the same brain circuitry, in the same emotions of the past are viewing their life through the lens of the past. And they're not seeing things how they are. They're actually perceiving and seeing things how they are. And they're telling a story in their mind that's actually causing them to perceive life equal to that story. Are you with me still? So then, you ask that person, so why are you this way? And they'd say, I'm so glad you asked because I get to talk about my past. <laughs> and as they talk about the incidents in their past, would you agree then that they're, they're saying, that was the event that changed me and I haven't actually been able to change since that event. I've, that event has defined me as the person I am today. Yes or no? Now, the research on memory says after a period of time, that story that they tell of their past, 50% of it isn't even the truth. So they're making stuff up. They are reliving a miserable life they never even had. Just to reaffirm, to recreate the emotions, to excuse themselves from changing. So then, most people then, they, they may say with the 5% of their conscious mind, I want a new life, I, I want a new relationship, I want a new career, and, or I am healthy. But if 95% of who they are is subconsciously programmed into the past, then that thought of their health, that thought of their wealth is never going to make it to the body because the body is programmed into the past. How many people understand? So then if you teach a person then how to be defined by a vision of the future instead of the memories of the past, then they would have to really start thinking differently. So if you and I are observing our life from the same level of mind every single day, we keep infinite patterns of information collapsed into the same reality called yes. our life. So then in order for you to change your body, something on your body, change something in your environment, or change some future time, you have to forget about your body. You have to forget about your environment. You have to forget about time. You have to become selfless. So going from selfish to selfless means we have to lay down the very thing we used our whole life to get what we want for something greater to happen. And that requires then dissociating and disconnecting from our environment, our body and time. And it requires then taking our attention off the emotions that reaffirm the addiction that keeps us human. Well, the people who you can always tell a person who is 
struggling with those emotions because they'll only talk about themselves. It's never about you. That's right. They can't think greater than how they feel. As a matter of fact, feelings become the means of thinking. And what they don't know that they're doing is they're creating a thought that produces an emotion that's addictive that causes them to think equal to how they feel and they create a state of being. Now, it's a scientific fact that the chemicals of stress dysregulate and downregulate genes and create disease. Now, if you know that we can turn on the stress response just by thought alone, it means then our thoughts can make us sick. So the question is, if our thoughts can make us sick, can our thoughts make us well? Because according to the quantum model of reality, all disease is a lowering of frequency. Yes. When you begin to elevate your frequency, your body becomes more energy and less matter. You become more wave and less particle. And you excite photons into the state where you begin to broadcast new information. But so I think that most people then, they try to create a new personal reality as the same personality. Mm -hmm. and you can't do it. Can't do it. You literally have to become somebody else. So the new science of neuroplasticity and epigenetics says that we're not hardwired to be a certain way the rest of our lives and, and, uh, and we're not doomed by our genes that we're marvels of change. But if you're thinking the same thoughts, I mean think about this, the average person thinks about 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day. Out of those 60 to 70,000 thoughts, 90% of them are the same thoughts as the day before. Yep. Same behavior creates the same experience. The same experience produces the same emotion. And that same emotion inspires the same thought. And we call that a personality. So by the time we're 35 years old, our biology becomes equal to how we think, how we act, and how we feel. So we fire and wire the same circuits in our brain, they mm -hmm. become hardwired. Mm -hmm. We execute the same behaviors, we reaffirm those circuits. Those behaviors create the same experiences that produce the same emotions, and that becomes familiar to us. So then when a person has to cross the river of change, from the old self to the new self, the moment they start making a change and the hardest part about change is not making the same choice as you did the day before all of a sudden they don't feel like themselves any longer you know what they right. do they return back to the same choice so they can feel the same way because god forbid they don't know who they are but don't you think though that most people wait for crisis yes. or trauma or disease or unfortunately diagnosis? that is the fate of the human condition we reach our lowest denominator to decide to change yes and my message is why wait you can learn yes. and change in a state of pain and suffering or you can learn and change in a state of joy and inspiration it's a choice I think that we view our life through the lens of the past yes that the brain is a reflection of everything you've experienced in your life so the brain is an artifact from your past let's just say that you wake up in the morning and you do the same things and you see the same people and you go to the same places and you drink coffee out of your same mug and you drive the work the same way and you see the same people that push the same emotional buttons. We could say that it's the external environment, the outer world, all the people you know and the things that you do and the places that you go. Your external environment is turning on different circuits in your brain causing you to consciously or unconsciously think equal to everything that you know. And as long as you react and think equal to everything you know, you keep creating more of the same life. The principle in neuroscience says that nerve cells that fire together wire together. So if you keep thinking the same thoughts, if you keep performing the same actions, if you keep living by the same emotions, over time the redundancy of that begins to hardwire the brain into very specific patterns. And that pattern then becomes an, our, our identity or our personality. So, most people, at a certain point in their life, they keep thinking the same way, they hardwire their brain into a certain pattern, they keep doing the same things that create habits that become part of their identity, and they keep living by the same emotions that are created from the same experiences. And the redundancy and repetition of that begins to cause the brain to fire in very finite networks, and that becomes what we call our identity. So then, by the time we're 35 years old, you know, psychology says that for the most part, we're a set of memorized behaviors and emotional reactions that make up who we are as an identity. So, so it, when it comes time to change, and people have to realize that 5% of their conscious mind is working against 95% of what they've memorized subconsciously. Wow. 
So it's mm -hmm. kind of like mind and body working in opposition. So that becomes very difficult to change because we're using a very small percentage to go against what we've subconsciously memorized.